Hello and welcome to Camilla Singh Show. We haven't been in the studio for a few weeks, so we are back here. And this is probably the last recording of 2022. Happy holidays to all of you, those people that celebrate Christmas and Happy New Year's. And Happy Hanukkah to all those Jewish families. They are celebrating Hanukkah and lighting up the candle. So with that... We are back in the studio to talk about politics, what has happened in the whole last few months and looking back for the whole 2022. So the panel is Annie Johanna. She is a school teacher. Glad that she's off today. So that's why she is able to <laughs> yes. come in the studio today. And she's an organizer, very political activist, and she's everywhere. And with her is uh, Dimple Saran, and she's with the healthcare worker, has worked during COVID time. He's a political activist too, and also the founder of One Voice Canada. So with that, we let's get these things started. So welcome both of you. We haven't seen both yes. of you sitting side by side yeah, for a long yeah, time yeah. <laughs> because I either you are busy or you are busy. But anyways, yeah. Annie has been with us Thank all you. the time, yeah. all throughout the uh, <laughs> panel. So let's start. I think we sh let's start in Sari. <laughs> Sari always is a newsmaker, always yeah. makes the headline in the on. news. Mm -hmm. And now with the new, uh, what do you call, new council and mayor, mm -hmm. Ah, I just have to take a deep breath. And they have said, uh, they said that um, they were going to be, yes, yes, DS, uh, Sari Police Services yeah. will cost about $134 million mm -hmm. if they will go with them. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, they are proposing that RCMP should stay in Sari mm -hmm. as a police or a law enforcement of choice. Mm -hmm. And they voted, and they have submitted the final report to the government. So what do you think would be the next step? What will take place? <laughs> Even for both them, both of them, it's yeah. just like you are sitting on the cutting edge. Yeah. You have a job today, you might not have a job tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. And Lewiski, who is the uh, chief, he might not be in position unless he wants to join Surrey. If that happens, if that's the way it's going to go. Yeah. Your thoughts on that? I mean, I'll try to keep it short. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, you know, just a couple of points, maybe. I think, number one, that's a good point to raise. Um, hearing from a couple of people that I know that are involved in, in either police force, that there is that concern, right? Or, or almost the mistreatment um, in terms of, like, the politicization of policing and, and how police officers have felt that they've been treated. So I think that's really important, right? These are families. These are people yeah, that, yeah, you know, have jobs and, and uh, trying to do their best, right? Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, the political powers that be. I think the second point that I, I can't answer that question. I don't think a lot of us can answer that question because the prevention Provincial governments thinking about regional policing yes. as well, yeah. which won't come for a while because the RCMP is contracted. But so that's a bigger question of so the mayor council might want to do certain things, but what about the province's actions? Right, once they have their report, that becomes a bigger piece of the story in terms of overall in BC. Right, um, I, I don't know what the answer is. I, I think I always go back to the idea that it felt to me was always going to be a mix. Because you have the larger, like, I hit and all these other pieces. Yeah. It was a transition report, right? The, the original one. And, um, and the idea that we would always be contracting out some services. Um, so I, I don't know. Uh, you know, my point of view is always about how do we get away from policing? How do we get to healthier communities and safer communities so that we can take care of each other in different ways? Mm -hmm. um, but as to what it means in terms of the policing we have, um, that's really a question that needs to be resolved at higher levels, in my opinion. Right. And so, uh, yeah, in some aspects, I agree uh, with Annie here. Um, but the main, I think, perspective that I like to look at is when we look at municipalities across Canada, Surrey is number seven mm -hmm. as the you know largest city. Um, every other municipality mm -hmm. at such a capacity has their mm -hmm. own municipal policing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they're able to cater to certain needs of their own community that the RCMP may not be able to. Not to say, uh, again, like Annie, I have friends in RCMP and in Surrey Policing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important to recognize that we should have that capability of working together. 
um, in certain aspects where we may need the RCMP, but in other areas we may need a, more of a municipal sort of, uh, you know, capacity of policing. Um, when it comes to municipal policing, I think um, the, the other important factor is, like we've mentioned, is that these are families we're talking about. Now that this policing has been put in transition, what does it mean for those officers who've given up other duties and jobs and have now reported as Surrey Police Services? Uh, they may be at stake to lose their jobs, so we have to consider that. And the other thing is, you know, will they be willing and wanting to go back to RCMP? Now, RCMP is controlled as a federal level, right? And so uh, RCMP officers are deployed all over the place in Canada. Mm -hmm. Where Surrey Policing Services would be more local, uh, the authority would be laying with the municipal kind of region, uh, provincial regions, uh, uh, when it comes to the po political arena of things. Um, so I think it's very important to consider that, um, that when we have emergencies across Canada, our RCMP officers can be deployed to other areas, making less um, individuals on the ground to do the service that they should be for Surrey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where Surrey policing can ultimately say, hey, you know, we need our officers on the ground. We, uh, we're we not able to send them out. So there's there's some sort of policies and procedures that are a little bit different on both levels when it comes to municipal and federal level policing. So I think, and then that's where the provincial sort of comes in, in that decision making. You know, each province is different. Um, our, their needs are different. What we cater to is different. Um, what may be required in one province or city may not be required in another province or city, depending on the population and the vulnerability of that city or province. And so I think ultimately it's up to the province to make that call and, and decide, you know, what is right for BC and, and how they would like to go forward. And that transition report speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. Mike Fallonworth has a big job in his plate, and he want and he wants the NDP to be elected in 2024. <laughs> I mean, there's yeah. election year yeah. coming too, so there is a lot of stuff in, in on the in, on the stake for whatever decision. They're not gonna make both happy. They have to bite the bullet and make a decision. That's one thing, right? I mean, that will be the only thing. And my point, I thought. Leave it up to the city of the people of Surrey. Mm. Get a referendum done whether they want this or they want that. So every four years when a new mayor is coming, they don't they don't even say, okay, when yeah. vote for me, I'll do this, vote for me, I'll do this. And this is where we have come yeah. between two mayors in last eight, seven, six, seven years. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm glad you said that. I think it's up to the people at the yes, end. Yeah, and yeah. it's also like what's happening in our neighborhoods. Yeah, right? right. Because if we see, you know, crimes or mental health, whatever, whatever yeah. the issues might be, um, I don't want that to be lost to politics, right? Like, yeah. I, I want a safe and healthy Surrey. Yeah. That's the bottom line, yeah. right? Yeah. So whatever we can do to have that voice heard, mm -hmm. more than these little choices, yeah. right? I'm not saying it's little, um, but, you know, more, more than that choice, that, that's what should matter. That's what we should be voting for, right? Yeah. Uh, what are you doing to help the community? Mm -hmm. Whatever the label is mm -hmm. at the end of the day that, that that's a whole other thing mm -hmm. um don't don't promise that the RCMP will do better or SPD mm -hmm. will do better mm -hmm. but then the neighborhoods stay the same yeah, yeah. right like yeah. that doesn't make sense either yeah, yeah. so the next thing switching mm -hmm. the topic yes. are we going to talk about the snowfall there was a big mm -hmm. snowfall on November 28th yeah. where on everybody and people knew it was all announced in the weather mm -hmm. because I watch TV I watch weather mm -hmm. There were no plows. It's not, I'm not talking about one city. Yeah. It's everybody. The Metro Vancouver was under, not lockdown, but under snowed mm. down. And people were stuck for 14 yes. hours on the highway or on the bridges and all that. So what do you say? Doesn't these people have f not funding or equipment to think that maybe it might, the snow would fall? And there were so many accidents and things like that. What went wrong there? And the snow is going to fall. We are in winter. Do you think these people prepare ahead? Everybody has a budget. I'm, I'm curious. I was born in Montreal and I still remember like the, yeah. the snow days there and, you know, the blizzards and, you know, like it, it's a lot harsher there, right? Of course, and I'm yeah. just curious, why can't we have a healthier snow budget? Like, like, what does it mean to, to increase the budget, right? Because it doesn't mean you're always going to use it, right? right? I know Vancouver and the lower mainland, it's shifting, right? Some years we get a lot. Some years there's almost nothing. I think 2015, there was like 
not a single day of snowfall in yeah, the year, and right? And what four million dollars is a budget? Yeah, for Metro Vancouver and Montreal is one hundred and eighty-four. Yeah. So I'm just million. curious. So because of what the size, if we doubled it. Or, I mean, you know, whatever the amount might be. Because it doesn't mean you use it, right? It might be, it could be reallocated, right? I, I just wonder, because yeah. yes, I had a lot of people that I knew. Yeah, it wasn't even a lockdown. It was stuck in the middle of the highway, in the middle, you know, bridges being shut down, completely cutting off Surrey, right, and other yeah. areas. Um, you know, people could have died, I right? Think- it could have been so much worse than what it was. So I think it is a crisis issue. And I just want to see a healthier budget so that we're not scrambling. With the understanding that, you know, budgets are there. There's budget lines, right? You use what you need mm-hmm. and, and then go from there. But, but keeping it at what seems to be a bare minimum um, doesn't seem to be enough now that we've had several, you know, a couple of years. But, yeah, that, that November 28th was, was definitely, uh, I was shocked by it. Yeah. Because I was even like, oh, I'll get home. It took me an hour to get home. Like, and yeah. I, it's usually yeah. a 10-minute drive for me, yeah. right? So it was for everybody. And all of us left early. Like, we tried to take precautions. Mm-hmm. But the roads were of such state that uh, very quickly. I mean, yes, people can drive better, get snow tires, all of that. Yeah. But, but I think the larger issue is if there's more money, then at least, uh, you know, that the larger issues of, like, highways, bridges, those can be taken care of. I think that has very little to do with snow tires or people driving. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was one of the ones, unfortunately, stuck. So I was stuck for a good eight, nine hours oh, that day, wow. you know, between Vancouver and Surrey. And I, I agree with Annie. It was a crisis at that point. Yeah. It was, uh, you know... Uh, People were on the roads without food, without bathrooms, without... Some may have had illnesses like diabetes or other things that could have progressed into Uh, worse emergency situations. I think the dynamics at play come to emergency preparedness. How how well prepared is BC for any emergency that takes place, whether it's being snowed down, whether it's earthquake, whether it's whatever it is? What kind of budgets are in place? What kind of, you know, what kind of things are we implementing to prevent versus intervene after the fact? Mm -hmm. You know, we had uh, Gotuaras and Mandir step up that day and churches and other neighbors, you know, families going out and helping and providing food uh, to those that were stuck. We had um, parking lots available for those that were stuck, wanted to sleep overnight or left their cars abandoned. And used the washroom for that matter. Used the washroom and many had abandoned their cars, Mm -hmm. vehicles that day. They had to get home to their kids and other seniors and families. I think, you know, just watching that blew me away. It was like, you know, what are the dynamics around emergency preparedness in BC? Yeah. And what are the budgets allocated to e- towards each thing? We really need to look into that at a political level mm-hmm. and make sure that we are well prepared and preventative measures are there. And like you said, what happened to the Ministry of Transportation? <laughs> what <laughs> happened to each of the municipalities mm-hmm. when it came to just even simple salting down everything in advance, um, you know, shoveling and plowing things so that this wouldn't take place? So I think it was... A real lack of communication, lack of preparedness, and a lack of being out there helping individuals out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think it may be a time right now for the all the cities or municipalities to look at to have a regional kind yes. of it's no removal services. Yes. It's not like Surrey, this is the border of Surrey, yeah. New West, Delta and all that. And that's where it got very confused, right? I think everybody start looking at the books and their papers and then they say, oh, the truck couldn't get there because all the roads were all blocked by people. It was an excuse. I think this could have prepared the roads long before the people got stuck on the roads. And we do live regionally, right? Yes. Most of us don't work and live in, in the same city. Same city. I, I'm very lucky, but, but a lot yeah. of people don't, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we have to realize that too, right? Yeah. People's commutes don't look like within a city. Yeah. So, you know, where are the plows, right? Yeah. Or do you have things stationed? at different bridges and yeah. you know different access points because those people need to cross every single day uh twice <laughs> you know so so all of that needs to be yeah and again yeah that might be more expensive yeah yeah, yeah. so changing that mm-hmm. we have a new premier right now david Eby, and as soon as he got into power he's making announcement pretty well mm-hmm. every second day mm-hmm. i would say mm-hmm. <laughs> the first announcement he was he wanted to freeze icbc mm-hmm. yeah. and also uh, housing. I think he made an announcement of 94 new module housing mm-hmm. downtown east side and all that. So there is announcement coming after announcement. But sometimes you have to think about he was a housing 
Curling mm -hmm. before he was uh, housing was housing under ministry, his ministry, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was also ICBC as well. Mm -hmm. So now, just because he's elected as a or appointed as a premier, he's making all the changes that he could have done it long before that. So, do you think he is preparing to get elected next time? I mean, <laughs> it's coming. It's twenty twenty four, right? In, or 2023, I think, next uh, provincial election. Yeah, I, I would expect a new premier to, to tell us what they're going to do, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Or where their priorities lie. I know it seems like a lot, but, but I think especially with, you know, I mean, the reality is we have like a two-party system right now. Yeah. Um, and, and just the fact that, you know, the liberals have questions, and as do people. Right. Um, and so I think it's only fair. Yes, he's held many important, crucial portfolios. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's always interesting. You know, it's not just one person making the decisions. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, yes, they're the head, but um, it's so much more complicated than that. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not that he could have done all of that by himself beforehand. Mm -hmm. But certainly if there's new priorities or, or more. Uh, willingness to take stronger action. Um, I, I would like to hear that from any any uh, prime minister, uh, premier. Sorry, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from any leader, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I'm I'm glad they're stepping forward and not waiting. Mm -hmm. um, I think these are all really important issues that need to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, ninety, ninety four. That that's not a lot. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's a it start. It's many. something. Um, but, you know, and a lot of the other announcements, I think it's, there's, there's so much more to this. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm sure there's more to come. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would, I would anticipate the next budget, all of that will yeah. be a lot more, um, many specific as to details on many other portfolios as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and with a new cabinet, I think, again, it's important to kind of see, uh, you know, again, where those priorities are for each of those, uh, ministries. Yeah. Yeah, and typically that's what happens when you get elected, you know, the core background you have, the experience you have, you try to bring it onto the table initially mm -hmm. because uh, that's what you have been passionate about and bringing into the forefront in your certain areas and trying to make sure that that is dealt with, um, you know, sometimes is the politic political way to go. Mm -hmm. um, and then bringing around the other diversity of different areas and subject matters. Um, typically, that's that's how leaders present themselves um, when they have when they are elected or appointed is to stand on ground for what they uh, were initially known for or their platform was about, mm -hmm. right? And so um, I do see him leading that same way. Um, as to building upon that leadership, uh, you know, which ways we're going to go, well, we'll just have to see because he's uh, quite new at this point. And, you know, um, I think you're right. The platform for building that foundation starts now. And uh -huh. so typically that's what a political leader will do is if they want to be reelected next term or next time for what they are known to be about, then this is the route they take is to, um, to present um, certain areas and expertise. And then after that, build upon it with the, the cabinet that they have in place for different areas and subject matters. And I'm kind of... Uh, I am pleased with the cabinet announcements, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you know, the different uh, people and individuals who have been placed into those appointed um, areas. And I think they will, you know, really do well um, And uh, from their backgrounds that we have seen so far. Yeah. Uh, that, that would have been my next question. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the new appointment of different, there is, a, for the first time since 19... 70s, I think we have a housing minister, mm -hmm. which we never had. All the money was poured into BC Housing, mm -hmm. and BC Housing was allocating all the funds who they like, who they don't like, mm -hmm. and they were building all that, and nothing happened between. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, he fired all the directors in there. Mm -hmm. So there is a housing minister, who Ravi call on. Mm -hmm. He's new in this too, and he's new to politics anyways, but uh, our Rachana Singh is appointed mm -hmm. at the Minister of Education. Yeah. So there is about seven South Asian being appointed as the ministers. Mm -hmm. And Nikki Sharma, yes, AG, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's all good, right? Yeah. So this is a very mixed, I think he thought long before he pointed people out and and I think even Jagru Bra got mm -hmm. appointed a trade minister or something, yeah. which you poor guy has never had any <laughs> any any positions <laughs> any before that. So what do you say? What do you say? Is it all good? And I, I like to Pender's point <laughs> to um, to the idea of of experience, right? Mm -hmm. So 
yeah, some of these people might be newer, but but nonetheless, like Nikki Sharma, her background as a lawyer dealing with indigenous, like, I think that's super important to yeah. the role of attorney general. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I'm sure she'll have many people to advise her in other areas that mm-hmm. she might be newer to, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Rashna is exciting. You know, she was doing a lot of good work as a parliamentary secretary in anti-racism. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really important for, ed- you know, as an educator, yeah. this is my ministry, right? This is my yeah. employer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and certainly we have issues, but, but at the same time, I'm excited excited to see she, she has a progressive lens and mm-hmm. as we seek to really make education better mm-hmm. uh, I think Rashna will will be open to listening yeah right mm-hmm. how that how that unfolds we'll see but but definitely open to listening mm-hmm. um, and to perhaps understand the needs of education for all learners because mm-hmm. um, education could just be people yeah. think it's one way but yeah. it's so much more complex than that um, yeah and, and you know Ravi for his newness um, still has had some pretty high profile portfolios so yeah. far yeah. and and seems to have been doing a good job and again to me a, a good politician is one that listens, well, that listens I don't need an I don't need goes. someone that only goes one way yeah. I want them mm-hmm. to be able to listen to everyone and then come to the table with ideas that will bring us forward yeah. so they all have all those positions are rather difficult um, and and we will see what happens right and, and how they roll it out right yeah. that that's going to be you know not just the promises but what about the money? What about the resources? What about the, inf- whatever it might look like, right? I think that's going to be where we have to hold them accountable, yes. that they need to keep their promises. Yeah, and I agree with Annie. Um, you know, even though they're new to their leadership areas, uh, they have experience in the political arena now. It's mm. been some time. Uh, they have proven to be, uh, you know, sort of presenting and progressing and doing the things that are in betterment of society overall. So mm-hmm. whether it comes to Ravi, Rachna, you know, uh, Nikki, it doesn't really matter if you look at their backgrounds. They've been able to accommodate things for BC that are required. They have been um, progressive in their thinking pattern. They have brought forward some new ideas which weren't there be implemented before. So I think coming to a new table doesn't necessarily mean that they may not be able to handle that um, scenario or that position. I think, in fact, it'll give them something to work with Mm -hmm. and build upon. And, um, you know, when we speak of Rachna Singh, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, well-educated herself and then very uh, much bringing up a family in BC Mm -hmm. herself, right? Mm -hmm. Same with Ravi. Um, So I think um, these are important uh, sort of factors to look at that, you know, they manage well themselves in their daily lives and their personal lives along with in the political fields. And so uh, bringing that experience to the forefront is very important. And diversity, as -hmm. you mentioned, seven South Asians being elected and appointed that way um, is a huge, you know, deal for us in in Canada. Yeah. Um, Multiculturalism, anti-racism and all the bigotry that we've been, you know, kind of opposing to. And... um, uh, people like us, Annie and I, who are activists out there on mm-hmm. these kind of sort of core issues, mm-hmm. it helps us to feel a little bit more relieved mm-hmm. that yes. we are getting <laughs> proper and uh, sort of representation in those mm-hmm. particular fields. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you think there was a week, and I think it's a couple of weeks ago, that there were three murders of three women mm. started in Surrey and Coquitlam and North Vancouver? And uh, and this was a relationship sort of violence. And uh, so do you, I am just thinking, I mean, I'm sitting and looking at it when I was looking at the news there. Do you think this organization that serves the women or counseling or transition houses and all that, do you think the more funding poured towards them would have avoided that? Do you think there is lack of funding? And we have forgotten that violence against women has been in the bank bench and gone away and it's not going to happen. But three matters in a week, I think is too many. Even one was too many, three in a week. And I think they also need, we don't have a Ministry of Women's Quality or anything like that. But I think with this government, maybe they should have a even secretary or something mm-hmm. that may be able to look at where the funds need to go to do a preach um, and education. BWSS, yeah. ba- uh, Battered Women Support Services, that pointed out that one of the murders, there was a restraining order on, yeah. on the husband, right? Oh, and yet yeah. still, yeah. I'm sorry, I might have the wrong word there, but there was an order of some yeah. kind yeah. and still that murder occurred. So I, I think you're not wrong. I, 
you know, when I say funding and resources, again, it's not just about money, yeah. right? It's how you apply that money and where it goes to. And certainly there's a lack of that. Yeah. The larger pressures in our society. Yeah. Uh, we know that this is not necessarily just a husband and wife issue, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, this has to do around stressors, right? E- you know, economics. Make, there's yeah. so many different things. I'm so sorry. Is that my phone? No. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that that we need to we need to look at all those factors. Mm-hmm. So I would highly hope you know I would hope that there's a larger investigation into this. Um, but you know, women are not equal yet. Yeah. That's the bottom line. There's still a lot of patriarchal, misogynistic thinking in our mm-hmm, communities. Mm-hmm. I teach high school. Mm-hmm. I see it, right? I'm I'm sorry, right? It's it's there, and it's not that these are bad human beings. Mm-hmm. It's just that. You know, the way we're told that women should be, men should be, mm-hmm. right? These are all, like, boxes that we're forced to live in. Yeah. Add stress to that, add pressure to that, and then you start to see violence really explode. Um, I do think this is a men's issue mm-hmm. also, mm-hmm. right? So in anything we do that's, like, gendered violence, domestic violence, we need to make sure that all genders mm-hmm. uh, are involved in that conversation. Yes. So it's not just, you know, uh, there's a very famous saying, you know, uh, don't rape rather than don't get raped, yeah. right? And the idea being, that you're really looking to the systemic issues yeah. of t- telling people that violence is not the answer. Yeah. That's it, right? Not telling women, here's how to survive violence. Yeah. Of course we need that, yeah. as we see. Yeah. But certainly that's not going to stop these incidences. Mm-hmm. You're just going to keep seeing it at different points of, in time. Yeah, and again, that's where funding falls in place, is the prevention on the um, sort of systemic issue that we have. You know, funding plays a big role in mental health. It plays a big role in education and awareness of and the knowledge we're putting out there for others. And that, again, includes all genders. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think, like we say, raising boys right, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Compared to saying to the daughter, don't wear that, you know? Mm -hmm. It's the mentality that we have in our society that needs to be kind of switched, right? It's it's an ongoing issue, always has been. And uh, it's sad to say that, yes, we lose our daughters and we lose our women. Um, You know, but just as uh, much as I... I'd like to also point out, you know, um, there are men who also face similar kind of abuse, Mm -hmm. right? We just don't see it as often. We just, it's occasional. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you may, and then also men. I'm looking, I'm looking at the (laughs) clock. I'm looking at the clock. We are just, that's how we are coming over time. Yes. So So uh, generally it's a, it's a, all people need to be in that conversation and we need to uh, determine where those funds should be allocated. You're right. Thank you both of you for coming in and giving your insight about all these topics that we have suggested. And Happy New Year's and Happy Holidays to all of you and stay safe, stay healthy, take care of your family and we'll see each other again on the same panel next week. Thank you.